Now this drawing is a little more advanced. I've done it from a photo I took down at the river. And I want to start with putting a bit of masking fluid, just kind of poking it in where I want the leaves to be lighter, just to protect it, because I'm going to paint that top um, fall color area on white paper. So I can select a few spots where I want to keep the whites. This is just an old round synthetic brush. I just wet it first so it's uh, a little easier to get the masking fluid out. I can tap the brush and spatter it. Various ways of getting texture on here, but and if you uh, if you get too much in an area that you don't want it, you can let it dry and just rub it off before you paint. I don't really enjoy working with this stuff because it's uh, it's kind of a nuisance. Now, I want to use some real clean yellow, so I'm going to squirt out a little bit. Because the yellow in the palette tends to get contaminated with uh, other colors as I jump around. So, when I want a real pure yellow, I'll just put a bit of fresh stuff out. Just a small dab. It's so uh, concentrated out of the tube. Won't need very much. The other colors, the oranges and reds, they're they're good enough. Just from the palette, it's only yellow that tends to get really affected by surrounding colors because it's such a weak pigment. So thin it out well with a brush load of water so that it's definitely a wash. And uh, it's going on the wet paper, so it's going to have soft edges. It's not really a wet brush load. It's, it's not going to explode and, and uh, kill all the whites. I still, even though I've got masking fluid on there, I kind of like to leave a little bit of white showing through just to force our habit. Now a bit of cadmium orange around the outside. Keeping the bright yellow in the center. Just look back at my reference. I'm not going to have it anywhere near as, as bright a yellow as the reference. I think it looks great in a photograph, but I think it would be just brutal in a painting. So I'm going to put some cobalt blue just to get some sky color up in here. And that's that will reduce my amount of yellow, but it will also force out the yellow and oranges to look brighter, I'm hoping. Everything dries so much lighter. So you can afford to be pretty generous with the pigment when you're working on wet paper. Just a bit of cadmium orange mixed with those other colors. You can see it's toned down. Now I've got uh, cobalt blue with raw sienna, which is sort of a yellowish, kind of an earthy yellow. So it doesn't go real bright green. And uh, I switched to a little bit of burnt sienna and fallow blue to make the real dark, almost almost like forest greens here. Now I've started to spray just from a distance using my um, garden sprayer here. Just while that paint is setting up, 
and it'll pull back and leave the light spots now load some darker color onto that brush to get a few dark spots mixed in so it's not all light and dark a liner brush right all still on wet paper here from the first from the first wetting I want these lines to be kind of soft because I'll go in later or after everything's dry and I'll reinforce some that I want to be in sharper focus. This just adds depth to it to have some some of the lines soft edges, soft focus. It's a pretty, uh, this is a mixture of uh, burnt sienna and violet. You can use uh, ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and it'll give you a, a nice dark brown, but I thought there's there's no real color to be seen in that dark but if there is now the paper's dry totally dry and you really have to make sure it's dry we start removing the masking fluid I'm just using masking tape sticky side out and just gently pull You can tell if there's any left by just rubbing your hand very clean over the surface of the paper. You'll feel the little bumps where it's left on. Now I have to go back in and, and work with a bit of yellows and oranges to uh, kind of integrate those blobby white shapes back into the picture. It might require some scrubbing to soften some of the edges. I could do with this. And I'm not doing it all over the painting, just in places where I want to sort of bring out the coarser textures. But one of the reasons I really don't like it is that I have to go in and do this kind of thing after the fact. And now I can find a few tree trunks and branches that I want to make sharp focus. I'm going to mix them in with the softer ones. Just pick spots where you'd like to emphasize it. And I'll go and try and strengthen the yellows a little bit. It seems when it dried that uh, it faded out an awful lot. Now a liner brush will do the fine work. I always like to have some of these skinny branches. Just to sort of dress it up. Adds a little bit of detail in places where you want to draw people's attention. I just get ideas by going back to my reference every once in a while. And now a bit more of that same green, a little bit... Um, darker on my this is an oil painting brush that was just sanded down a little bit to uh, make it stiffer I didn't some of them that I, I use for a scrubber I cut them off and then sand them just rub this on a piece of sandpaper and it, uh, it just shortens them a little bit and makes them kind of ratty so I can 
get a grassy look to it. Now I'm going to dust in, just dry brush, a bit more yellow right on top because it was, it dried kind of weak. And I think if I'm careful, I can just um, strengthen this yellow in places just to beef up that color a bit. Rest right over top of everything, but it's a very dry brush, and you have to prepare that brush on the palette. Now back to my violet or ultramarine with burnt sienna. Get this dark brown. It's about a number six brush, I guess. And a little stronger mixture of color for a uh, darker mixture for this underneath the bridge where it's not getting any light at all. Now, I'm using the same brush here, same colors too. Um, I don't want to paint all of these uh, spokes or whatever you call them in the, in the railings. Uh, like I like to skip bits and pieces and suggest them, but suggest enough so that it doesn't leave make it look like there's holes in the railing but I don't want it to look so mechanical that it was as if it was done with a ruler we'll give it a bit of a hit and miss it's always tricky doing these double railings where you see through one side of a fence invariably you're going to have to uh, leave out some stuff there was kind of a dent in this slope I think I'll just change the curve slightly so it's a little bit smoother This is a one inch flat brush and then it just happens to fit this area nicely so I can get this reflection. It's not in my reference but I've changed the shape and size of this river so I have more water. Now I have to allow for the reflection. Like I need a bit of uh, a bit of grass along the edge where the bridge sort of sinks into the bank there, and that's the end.